Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is transportation of time and temperature sensitive pharmaceutical products, that is TTSPP. Drug products are manufactured under controlled conditions of the environment. The environment includes several aspects, including the temperature and humidity conditions. Since transportation is a process of reaching out of the distributor or the customer, it is necessary to maintain similar conditions as in manufacturing. WHO Technical Report Series number 961 dated 2011 prescribes in annex 9 for the storage and transport of time and temperature sensitive pharmaceutical products please note that this is abbreviated as ttspp in the coming up slides in this video we will restrict the discussion to transportation only other requirements will be discussed later at another opportunity at an appropriate time. Let us see the WHO Technical Report Series number 961 dated 2011 prescription. Transport TTSPPs in such a manner that transport temperatures meet local regulatory requirements at the sending and the receiving units so that the temperature excursions above or below the manufacturer's labeled storage temperature range do not adversely affect the product quality this is a prescription under section 6.2 of the product stability profile so to ensure that the product stability is maintained it is necessary to have such controls. Product stability data must demonstrate the acceptable temperature excursion time during transport. This is important. It may not be possible to maintain the exact conditions. Some excursions may be accepted, but the excursions must be within the guideline requirement. The guideline says that the average mean kinetic temperature should be within the specification in data from the last 24 hours period. For more details, you may please refer USB chapter 1079. It is important to differentiate between the absolute temperature excursions and the mean kinetic temperature. Formula for calculating the mean kinetic temperature looks a bit difficult to understand. After a couple of attempts, you will know the importance of mean kinetic temperature. Reason is protection of TTSPPs against degradation. This is the purpose of monitoring the drug product right through the transportation till the product reaches the customer. Section 6.5 to 6.12 describe several other requirements for handling of drug products. Let us see the details of prescription under these sections. They include transport route profiling and qualification. This is necessary to check the environmental conditions of each region where the product is being transferred. There are different temperature and humidity zones across the globe. The monitoring system for each zone should be qualified for design, installation, operation and performance. Temperature control transport. Necessary hardware and software to achieve these conditions is necessary. Temperature and humidity controls and monitoring 
during transit. The software should be capable of monitoring the temperature and humidity at any required frequency throughout the transportation. Generally, it may be set at monitoring every half hour. Sometimes it may be less time also. Qualification of temperature controlled road vehicles. This is the part of hardware qualification for transportation. Calibration and verification of transport monitoring devices. This is a part of software qualification. Shipping containers, packing, product handling during packing and transport, and transport of return and recalled TTSPPs. Same type of requirements are necessary for handling the return or recalled products. Let us see the prescription under WHO technical report series number 957 dated 2010. Annex 5 of this guide also prescribes similar conditions under section 10, the vehicles and equipment for logistics requirements for safe transportation of the drug products. In this WHO guideline, you have similar information in section 10 of Annex 5. Detailed similar requirements are provided through sections 10.1 through 10.18 of the Annex R. We have similar prescription under WHO Technical Report Series number 937 dated 2006. In Annex 5, Good Distribution Practices for Pharmaceutical Products under Section 11, Transportation and Products in Transit. Section prescribes similar requirements in subsections 11.1 through 11.17. WHO Drug Information Volume 33, Number 2, dated 2019, has some additional requirements. 18.20, where feasible consideration should be given to adding technology such as global positioning system, GPS, electronic tracking devices, and engine kill buttons to vehicles which would enhance the security and traceability of vehicles with products. This section has additional requirements to have a global positioning system GPS to track the container exactly where it is. Engine kill is a safety mechanism used to shut off the machinery in an emergency when it cannot be shut down in routine usual manner. 18.26 Rejected, recalled and returned products as well as those suspected as being falsified should be securely packaged, clearly labeled and be accompanied by the appropriate supporting documentation. 18.26 has additional security system to handle return and rejected or recalled products. 18.29 Special care should be taken when using dry ice and liquid nitrogen in shipment containers due to safety issues and possible adverse effects on the quality of the medical products. So adequate care has to be taken while handling such coolants is prescribed in this section. Guidelines on good distribution practices for pharmaceutical products as per CDSCO. CDSCO prescribes under section 11 the transportation. The section 11.1 says pharmaceutical products shall be transported in accordance with storage conditions indicated on the packaging information and on the label. Section 11.2 says 
the individuals responsible for the transportation of pharmaceutical products shall be informed about all relevant conditions for storage and transportation. These requirements shall be adhered throughout the transportation and at any intermediate storage stages. Central Drugs Standard Control Organization CDSCO has also similar requirements prescribed. Section 11.3 of the same guideline prescribes pharmaceutical products shall be stored and transported in accordance with the procedures such that the identity of the product is not lost. The product does not contaminate and is not contaminated by other products. Adequate precautions are taken against spillage, breakage, misappropriation and theft. Spillage during transportation shall be handled as per the type of vaccine, example live or killed etc. according to the standard operating procedures of the manufacturer. Appropriate environmental conditions are maintained, example using cold chain for thermoliable products. So, section 11.3 prescribes for an effective system and procedures to deal with all the requirements mentioned here. Audit checklist for road transport operations. Recent news item of ECA Academy dated August 17th, 2023 provides a quick checklist for road transport operations. They include requirements of a pre-trip inspection on units prior loading pharma shipments like order free, clean, dry, operable and preconditions, maintenance, monitoring of temperature and humidity during transportation, security seals of the transport containers, vessel protection against theft, etc. This is only an extract from that newsletter. You may go through the newsletter for more details. I hope that the requirements for transportation of drug products are understood well. Please refer these guidelines referred in this video for more information. Thanks for watching. For more videos please do subscribe like and share also please leave a message in the comments box for any further support thank you